on to part two. Uh, we've installed these two, um, I don't know, chip guards here. And now I'd like to get something going around the perimeter. All right, we've got what we need to do some basic layout. We've got a tape measure. We've got a Sharpie. And just get to it. So we said that we want the first notch at 10 inches. I'm going to be using this Sharpie marker for layout again. I showed you this on that video yesterday. Instead of using an actual layout fluid, uh, I use a Sharpie. It's fast and easy, and you can use the Sharpie for uh, other things. Um, you don't have to wait for it to dry. We need to, we're going to be scribing another line at 15 inches. We also know that we want our notch one inch tall. So I'm just going to go ahead and make an area for that scribed line. Just for giggles, we will set this um, digital caliper for one inch. We'll scrap our line. Okay, simply take your caliper now, drag that across. You now have a, a nice straight line. And then what we're going to want to do is find the 10 inch mark. I'm going to do this a little bit different here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scribe this with my little punch I, I use for a lot of things. It's going to make it a little dash across that line and then also at 15 inches here. So I scratched the line there. Now I'm going to take my square, got this little square here, and let's make sure you guys are still within view, which you are. Now I'm going to bring this um, up to the face of the fab lock. I got my square squared to the fab lock. We're just going to go ahead and do that. So now we've got a nice scribed line there. Got one there. Okay. These are an old pair of uh, Midwest tin snips. If you're gonna buy some tin snips, these are the ones that my sheet metal friends use. Um, We're right on that bad boy. And we'll cut it off. Perfect. Perfect will do. Nice clean cut every time with that shear. Not bad for Harbor Freight. How much does it cost? About 300 bucks. Is it worth it? Not sure. I'll let you know in a year or two. Hopefully by then we're in a much bigger shop and the videos are going to get a heck of a lot crazier because uh, I've got a lot more projects than you guys probably would imagine uh, lined up. I just need a little bit more space. It involves uh, putting engines on things that don't usually have them. So yeah, uh, I think this is going to work. Now we got to get some magnets on here. No big deal. Okay, we've got magnets. These magnets happen to be strong enough to work right through the aluminum sheet and grip onto the steel, but that's not good enough. I'd like to go ahead and get them mounted to where we can uh, drill a hole, set them in that hole, and then uh, we will have it to where uh, um, they actually make contact with the back of the milling table. So. Um, I'm going to flip this around so when we're drilling our holes, this is uh, going to allow the magnet to be offset to the back side and do what we need to do. 
Let's check really quick what the um, diameter is of these. About 470 thousandths or so. Um, so let's go ahead and scribe a line at let's say 320 thousandths. Okay? Off the base of this. I'm going to have one near the vise, one near the end. Okay? So I'm not going to get too carried away in trying to figure out the perfect placement for these. It's not worth it. Um, I've got better things to do. So that being said, we've got a line scribed accurately for the height of these. Um, let's punch a hole and make this come to life. Got one there, one next to the vise, each side of the vise. Do, 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 do one here. Okay. Good. Now, let's get our drill. We've still got the same center drill that I use on the lathe a lot. And we're just going to drill through here all the way. Making sure to drill centered on one of these 5 8 holes on the fab block. Okay, that hole is obviously not big enough for that magnet to fit through. Let's use our Harbor Freight Unibit and see if we can get up to a size that will allow us to do our thing. Getting closer, but we're not quite there. If it's a little big, whoo, sheet metal. Don't ruin me. Let's take a look. I think this is going to be a real close fit. Please work. Please work. Damn it, it's too small. It's just a hair too small. So, let's do this. Just eat a little bit. A little bit more. We're not asking for much here. Alright. Cool. We're in like Flynn. So here's what I'd like to do. When we go to epoxy these things, which we're going to be using this Loctite of A and B epoxy, you got a resin and a hardener. That's what you need. And uh, I'll, I'll try to remember to put a link below for that. I bought that on Amazon too. Go figure. Um, pretty much everything. <laughs> Anything new in my hand you see in here is probably bought there. So Anyway, um, I'm going to set these and I'm, well, let me drill them all first. I'll shut up so you guys can just watch this get done and uh, not have to listen to me. We will all be better for that. God, those magnets are strong. Could barely slide this thing. One more. Okay. So, here's what's going down. We're going to put a little bit of paper under each, each one of these because we do not want to get epoxy on our nice welding table. And I'm also going to ensure that there's no 5 8 diameter hole underneath each one of these because I want it to fit nice and flat. So 
that's easy. Start getting these guys set. This is cool, man. Real cool. You stubborn, stubborn guy. Let's see, can we hit a magnet with a hammer and not crack it? No. <laughs> All right, can we hit it with wood and a hammer and get it down enough? No. Can I just quit being lazy and drill the hole out a little bit more and prevent ruining a magnet? Probably, if it's not too late. Okay. I'm kind of curious if I affected the magnet's gripping strength a little bit, but it's pretty damn strong still, so we're going to let it roll. So let's uh, let's talk about using some epoxy. Um, generally speaking, I think you want about a 50-50 mix. You could read the instructions on the back, but that'd make a lot more sense. And I'm not willing to do that. I do know this crap is strong, and I've never had an issue with it. So uh, you put some on there and mix it um, mix it with something you never need to use again because you're not going to be able to um, I've got some plastic I just pulled out of the, the trash can this will work great this also works good for mixing it so gonna get pretty fancy here about to blow your mind check that out all right so let's mix it there's different ways you can do this I've mixed a lot of Bondo for doing car work and generally with Bondo you don't want to be doing this crap swirling it but for these kind of projects it doesn't matter uh, the reason you don't do that with Bondo is because you're gonna get a bunch of air bubbles in there and stuff and that's not good so with Bondo you kind of like fold it and fold it and fold it and fold it that's how you, you do it there, but we're sitting in a shop about to throw down on this and it doesn't matter. So now let's just apply that to the magnets. I'm not sure what the working time of this stuff is. It's probably not very long before it gets so hard. You can't tool it anymore. Poxy is pretty cool, man. You can bond all kinds of stuff together with it. It's very, very strong. Stinks like hell. I think it stinks like a, like a, a woman that just had a perm. If you've ever had a mom or a grandma or a girlfriend or whatever that had a perm, this is exactly what this stuff smells like. You're kind of wondering what kind of chemicals they use on those heads can't be good okay so yeah I've already got decent coverage on all these I'll try to use the rest of this up you'll know if you didn't mix it well because you'll end up with parts that are still sticky whenever um, you know a week later that would be because it wasn't mixed properly Cool. Damn. Good coverage, good coverage. Right on. Okay, I'll give you a close up shot. Wow. Wow. 
wow and well so we've got our four magnets set and let's see what the time is on this five minutes <laughs> okay I'm gonna shut the camera off for a few minutes and we'll get back at it okay it's been a few minutes we've got our uh, rear chip deflector chip guard whatever you want to call it here and uh, we're gonna do the first test still a hair tacky on these but it's okay it's set up enough so we'll do a test fit you can probably hear already things gripping like hell so that's good we got very good grip and if we ever need to move it it's really easy I'll show you so I used to always notch everything and make it like a file fit but I realized having a little clearance on the sides actually makes everyone's life easier so um, unless we were trying to hold in flood coolant uh, then I wouldn't have so much gap but um, if I do relocate the vise if it's off um, I've got a little wiggle room on each side a quarter inch so I'm going to give you that little detail but what do you think of the overlap here um, I think it's pretty good We've got uh, this plate in front of this one, so everything that hits it will go down. Um, and yeah, I think that will help catch a bunch of chips. And we can do one for each side. And then if we want to, we can add something here on the sides. I'm leaving this open for now, but um, it doesn't have to be. Uh, we can very easily um, have something that just goes in there. Another thing I was thinking about doing uh, was just putting down some wood or uh, maybe some aluminum or something on the table itself to keep chips from filling up in here. Um, I think that's kind of uh, nice for cleanup. You just uh, go in there and vacuum really quick um, and you don't have to worry about sucking out uh, all this, the chips from the slots. And uh, yeah. All right, I think I just got an idea. It involves this torch, some more of our material we've been using, and what else? Okay, so let me grab a piece of this aluminum here. So I'm thinking of this. What if we make a couple of 90 degree pieces that stick to the table here? Instead of trying to mess around and make something for the front of this, what if we have some ones we can stick on the table and adjust them as needed per project so we can just move them in and out and it's like adjustment kind of like you have on your spray nozzles for your flood coolant and stuff um, so here's what I'm thinking this guy is six inches from the well it's actually six and a sixteenth of an inch so six um, inches and one sixteenth six and one sixteenth of an inch on the table the top of this thing yeah, this one's six and an eighth. Um, and if we do our bend and don't break the aluminum, we we're having stress cracking issues. If you remember on the first video I made where I made the stand for that little uh, uh, shear over there. Um, it's actually a shear slip roll and whatever. Um, press break. So let's, let's do something real quick. I want to preheat the aluminum before I bend it and see if that prevents me from breaking it. Now... If we need, we'll see, six, we'll just make this one uh, six and, should we make it taller? Probably should. Well, well, we'll make it six and a quarter inches plus, let's say a uh, one inch flange. Yeah, six and a quarter plus one inch. So seven and a quarters, and we'll shear that off really quick. We'll see what happens. I don't think you're missing out on much here. My wife's trying to get me to go to church, so if I can stay busy and look like I'm up to something, I might not have to go. <laughs> I know I sound like a little kid. Um, but here we go. Let's grab some lines really quick. Okay. This is my church in here. Um, church of making stuff. 
So we got a couple scribe lines. Let's cut some metal. One after another. One Mississippi. This thing's like magic. You know what, China? You did good. For once. Just kidding. Um, all right. So we uh, got three good pieces and one shorty out of that deal. So not bad. Now what we need to do is scribe another line at one inch so we can do our bend on that sucker. Sorry. I think you just said to see my face. So... I know I was showing you guys using that layout method and all that earlier. We're not doing that now. Now we're going to actually try to just get some stuff done. So, set this guy for one inch. Actually, we're going to go for an inch and an eighth. Because we're going to have some extra length uh, due to our radius of the bend. Inch and an eighth. <laughs> I can't talk, film, and uh, work at the same time. I thought this has worked for me. But for some reason, I feel like I have to keep talking in these videos, even though sometimes I'm just making dumb noises. Uh, we got one line set. Another one. I'm going to work on not talking, and uh, hopefully that helps you guys out a bit. All right. Now we need to preheat these. How are we going to do it? How hot are we going to get it? I don't know. Um, we're just going to heat it up and see what happens. So let me get a glove on. And for that, I'm going to use a, a nice heavy welding glove. And I'm going to get that torch. And then we're going to try to do this thing. Should probably use the other one. Whatever. Let's let's make make some stuff happen. This is pretty thin metal. I'm guessing it's not going to take long to uh, mess this up. Whew. It's already bending. Well, I guess if you're getting it to look nice and shiny, that's probably close enough. This is just a propane torch. It's not oxyacetylene or anything special like map gas or whatever. Let's shut this off. No stress breaks. Why aren't you a 90 degree bend, damn it? <laughs> you didn't even make it. There we go. All right, apparently you gotta use a little bit of strength uh, to make it happen. Let's take a close inspection of this. If you remember, before there was all kinds of cracks. We preheated it with the propane, and we did good. So we have them like this, and we have those magnets on there. So it actually holds it down. Right on. So let me take this up. So I'm thinking two per side, and you can do whatever you want with these guys. So. How about that? And then it kind of contains it to a nice small area. 
Uh, we got one other gap area here we need to address. This is a stuff will fly from here. Uh, you know what we could do is rivet a flap on here, a diverter, off of this guy. Yeah. All right. Well, we're making some progress. What What do you guys think? Um, I'll probably pause it here. This will be part two. And then um, you guys can give me some input. And if you think of anything genius, please comment below. Well, I made one more of these really quick. We're going to bust out the uh, same epoxy that we uh, just used. Uh, this Loctite epoxy. And there's no instructions. I thought I'd read them and <laughs> uh, go over them really quick. But there isn't any. So my... Uh, guessing game continues of the mixture. I say 50-50. That's my guess. Um, and I just squirted out way too much of this stuff this go around. Uh, I'm not sure why I did that. Um, but it's okay. So this time we're going to use a really expensive mixer here. This is some fancy, fancy aluminum. And again, big thing about the epoxy is you just want to make sure it's mixed very well because if you don't, it's going to be tacky for the rest of your life. Tacky like those wings people put on the back of their Hondas. That tacky. Tacky as the sound of the exhaust pipes on those same Hondas that have those wings on them. Space travelers. Okay, so got this pretty well mixed. And I'm just doing one magnet centered on each one of these because I want them easy to be removed. And magnets don't grow on trees. So if I don't have to put uh, multiples, if one does it, I'm going to do that. Also, your magnets for these ones can't be where the T-slots are located on your milling table. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to utilize the magnet anyway. So, I'm going to put a glob in each one of these really quick. Then we'll go back and fill it in. I've got this weight holding that one down because my hole was slightly too large. So I want to make sure that it wasn't it wasn't a nice tight snug fit, so I don't want that being below flush or proud at the bottom because then it won't sit flat. Damn, this has got to be boring to watch. I I don't even know why I'm putting this on the video. Okay, let's let that set up. We'll test those things. And we're going to throw this expensive mixing tray in the trash. Well, while I was waiting for that epoxy to dry for these little side deflectors, um, I decided to try to use my brain a little bit here and figure out what I was going to do for this. So I decided I was going to try to just make a couple of deflectors that go on the inside. Let me take this glove off. Make sure you guys can see here well. So here's the idea. I kind of like this overlapping everything. I, I'm holding it here as an example only. I'm going to rivet it to the backside. So chips don't get caught so now anyway let me show you what I'm doing so instead of trying to get all precise and figure this out it perfectly what I what I did was I just made some and then bent them into the angle I think that I'd like and now I'm going to cut um, cut some excess off that's on the bottom here so we can have some travel so I need to uh, have space for this 
thing to, since this part moves uh, when you use your vise, I must have clearance allowance for this thing to move with the vise, right? So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna simply notch this bad boy to fit around the vise, all right? So let's do that. I'm gonna give us a little extra clearance here. And then as far as how wide it needs to be, I can easily visualize and make this happen. So we're gonna notch this corner out like that and do the same thing for the other side. pair of these good yeah so now we'll notch them go from there I'm actually thinking this this little thing we're doing here is gonna be pretty good in the end uh, wasn't sure so that's why I've been kind of just you know baby stepping it um, taking a look at it as we go. So I'm happy with that. I think this is pretty cool. And then you'll have your little side deflectors here. Man, you'll be keeping all kinds of chips contained. And then I was also thinking of making uh, some slight angles. We could rivet to the top of this guy here and then they will further catch chips and uh, unfortunately this isn't going to be great for you guys to see when I'm filming but we'll figure something out we'll figure something out I can make this out of polycarbonate uh, once I get a base design um, and uh, the side deflectors you know I could keep those aluminum but maybe make the front out of acrylic or uh, poly I'll use polycarbonate because it's easy to machine and drill without it cracking and all that so yeah